Oh, praise God. It is good to be with you again this morning. And again, I want to thank you for your kindness. Every time, for the few times that I've come here, you have welcomed me. You have been so kind. I just so appreciate that. I mean, really, I love you and I thank you for your kindness. If you do not know who I am, my friend Bill back here would tell you you're lucky. Okay, that you're lucky if you don't know who I am. But just in case, my name is Dave Decker, and uh, I am a pastor at Lighthouse Community on the other side of Washington. And um, I have been invited by Steve Longstreth here, uh, a mutual friend of ours. And uh, I just, I just truly love coming here. I appreciate your kindness. I appreciate your love. And I want you to know you have been and you will continue to be in my prayers as you continue to search for the right man of God to be uh, the, the shepherd here at, uh, at your church. And uh, I'm excited for you, though. I really am. Um, I'm sure for you it's been a, a long road, a long road waiting for that man. Um, but... Once God provides, look out. Abundant life is going to tear it up. And I am just so excited. So excited. Yes, praise God. <laughs> praise God. Uh, uh, one thing, another thing that I love and respect that you have done this morning was honor our country as we celebrate our country's, our nation's birthday this week. Um, I love that you celebrate that, honor that, because we can sit here easily, easily, and point out the problems in our country. It's not hard to do. But I still would not trade our country for any other place on this planet. I believe God has blessed us, and I believe still today we live in the most wonderful nation on this earth, and we must not take that for granted. We must not. And I want to speak about freedom today. Freedom, not only in the aspect of what we will celebrate this week, but freedom that we see in God's Word, freedom that we have in Christ. And I want to share a story with you of... Uh, a gentleman who gave up something that I don't know if I could give up. I don't know if I were in this man's shoes if I could do that. I pray that I could. I truly pray that I could, but I don't know. And I want to read it to you here, just a short story. A century ago, a band of brave souls became known as one-way missionaries. They purchased single tickets to the mission field without the return half. And instead of suitcases, they packed their few earthly belongings into coffins. As they sailed out of port, they waved goodbye to everyone they loved, everything they knew. They knew they'd never return home. A.W. Milne was one of those missionaries. He set sail for the South Pacific, knowing full well that the headhunters who lived in this region that he was going to had martyred every missionary before him. Milne did not fear for his life because he had already died to himself. His coffin was packed. For 35 years, he lived among that tribe and loved them. When he died, tribe members buried him in the middle of their village and inscribed this on his tombstone, saying, when he came, there was no light. When he left, there was no darkness. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with us this day. On this day and this week, we celebrate the amazing uh, country that we live in, Lord, and I am so thankful for that, and I praise you for that. May I or anyone here 
may we never take that for granted. May we live the life that you have called us to live in this great country. May we shine bright. May we proclaim your word and your truth everywhere we go, through word and through deed. And may your blessing fall upon abundant life. And also with Lighthouse, Lord, as I'm away from my home this morning, but I'm so excited to be here sharing your word, just asking that your blessing and your will would be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So could you do that? Could you pack your coffin for a one-way trip? I don't know if I could do that. I've gone on mission trips, and I've, I've gone to um, third world countries. Uh, I, was, I was relatively, I, I, I'll make it sound worse than it really was, just so you think, wow, what a cool story. But I was, I was close to being kidnapped while I was in Sierra Leone on a missions trip. And we were driving. We just left the church I spoke at, and... Uh, uh, the pastor was driving and taking me to the next place I was to speak at. And we were coming, it's very important to know, we were coming back to that church the next day. So as we come around a corner leaving the church, there's a group of young people, uh, we would call them a gang, um, and they were blockading the road, and they had a giant speaker there, and they were, they were, they were shouting and uh, proclaiming whatever I, I, I do not know exactly. And my window was down, and they, they stopped the car, and uh, they grabbed my arm and were was holding on to me, and they're yelling at, at the driver, the pastor, and they're, they're, you're, they're yelling at him, and he's saying stuff back to them, and it's, this goes back and forth, and, and they're... Uh, they're holding on to my arm and slowly kind of pulling it and I'm not fighting back really God's peace was upon me I, 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 I knew he was in control um, but they're slowly pulling my arm and holding tighter and they finally let go and they let us through and we went through and I asked the pastor I said what did you tell them what was first of all what was going on and what did you tell them and he said they wanted to they wanted to take you. They wanted to hold you for ransom. I said, well, what'd you tell him? He said, I, uh, he said next time. <laughs> I said, Pastor Solomon, next time I'm going to be there tomorrow. He says, ah, you have to have faith in Africa. I said, yes, sir, you do. And by God's grace, we had no further problems, but I'll never forget that next time. Next, next time, like oh, you can have them next time. I, uh, but, but, but God is so good, and, 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 and you know, that was a, an adventure for me, but I don't know. I really don't know. Like I said, I pray that I could be a one-way missionary if that's what God asked me to do. And if you have your uh, Bibles with you and you'd like to turn to Acts chapter 4, and this is where I'm going to spend uh, the rest of our time together this morning. Acts chapter 4, beginning in verse 23. And I'm going to go down, read through 31, and then I'll come back and hit a couple things. And remember, the, the title of the message is called Freedom. Verse 23, reading from the, the Christian Standard Bible, After they were released... They went to their own people and reported everything the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together to God and said, Master, you are the one who made the heaven, the earth, and the sea, and everything in them. You said through the Holy Spirit by the mouth of your father David, your servant, why do the Gentiles rage and the people plot futile things? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers assemble together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in fact, in this city, both Herod and Pontius Pilate 
with the Gentiles and the people of Israel assembled together against you, your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your will had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, consider their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness. While you stretch out your hand for healing and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. Now where I want to spend most of my time for the next few moments is in the first verse that I read and the last verse. But let's kind of see what leads up to this point. A couple of the Lord's disciples, and I encourage you, I encourage you for myself or whoever speaks or shares with you, go home and read at least the entire chapter and get everything in context. Get everything in context. See what happened before what we talk about today. See what happened after. See what is going on in the story here. But a couple of the Lord's disciples, by God's grace, they healed a crippled man. And because of that, they were put in to prison. Now, it was, it was sundown when they were arrested, and they did not do trials at night or in the evening, so they had to keep them overnight, and then they were, had their trial the next day. And at this trial, you can read in Scripture, all the big shots were there. All the people, that if they had a title, they were there. And they were there coming against these disciples. And they wanted to know why they were doing this, under what authority they were doing this. And the disciples, before it was all said and done, said, you can tell us, I'm paraphrasing of course, you can tell us what you want to tell us. But if we have to choose between obeying you or obeying God, we're going to obey God. And they were upset. They were upset with the disciples. And they've gathered together, gotten their little right, more righteous than the huddle and figured out, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with these? He said, let's, let's just threaten them. Let's threaten them. So they threatened the disciples and said, don't you ever do this again. Don't you ever speak in the name of Jesus, share his word, or perform miracles in his name again. And then that takes us to verse 23. And the, verse, the first phrase in verse 23 says, after they were released. So after they gained their freedom. After they gained their freedom. Now think about it. If you were in those disciples' shoes and you just got your freedom, what would you do? And I would tell you what I would want to do. The, 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 the flesh in me would want to run home, be with my family, lock all the doors and windows, and never go out again. To be honest, I believe that's what I would want to do. To have a, a, this, this dangerous situation, threatened Maybe that I, I, I could spend more time, if not the rest of my life, in prison. Maybe even be put to death. I would want to run home and be as safe as I could. Once I 
got my freedom. But that's not what the disciples did. It says, they went to their own people and reported everything the chief priest and the elders had said to them. So basically, they went back to the rest of the disciples and others and, and gave them an update. Hey, this is what happened. This is what was going on. This is what we did. This is what they did. And this is what brings us to this point now. So after they gained their freedom, they went back to the office, so to speak, if you will allow me to put it that way. They go back to the office. They give their co-workers the update. And then they go into prayer. We have no greater weapon than prayer. Prayer. And you know when I'm really good at praying? I mean... I'm really good at praying when I've tried everything else and failed. I'm really good at, be, okay, well, I've tried everything else, nothing has worked, I guess I'll pray and ask God to help me now. Have you ever done that? I'm good at that. But what if we started with prayer? What if... In, Okay, and, and instead of the last or worst case scenario, we start right away with prayer. Asking the Lord for his will to be done in our lives. Asking God to protect us. We living in this amazing country. Again, I, I do not say that lightly, especially this week. I do not take that for granted. We are blessed. And we have our problems. It's not hard to see them. But we are so blessed. I heard someone say, you know how you have a good country when people are fighting to get in instead of fighting to get out. What if we applied that to our churches? You know you have a good church when people want to get in instead of want to get out. And we know that this beautiful building is not the church. You and I are the church as God's children. We are the church. We are the bride of Christ. And as we have our freedom in this country, and more importantly, our freedom in Jesus, what are we doing with it? What are you and I doing with it? I'm afraid many of us are doing exactly what I said I would want to do if I was in the disciples' shoes and just go home and turn a blind eye, protect myself, and hope they don't come looking for me. I think we need to be a little bit more like those one-way missionaries. And instead of running home and trying to be safe, we do whatever is needed whatever is needed. Our country is under attack. And I'm not talking about 
China or Russia or anyone else. I'm talking about we are under a spiritual attack. And the enemy, the enemy is coming for our children and fighting hard to steal our children from us. There's, in fact, there's a, there's a movie out. I've, I've not seen it. I want to see it. it and I, actually, I don't believe it's out yet. I believe it comes out this week called The Sound of Freedom. And a quote from that movie is, and I don't want to give anything away if you plan on seeing it or go to see it, but a quote in that movie is somebody was asked, why are you doing what you're doing? And the gentleman says, because God's children are not for sale. And the first time I heard that line, that hit me. God's children are not for sale. We have our freedom. We have freedom. That awesome young man sat up here today and did something I can't do and played an instrument. I wouldn't know how to hold it, let alone play it. And he was up here doing that beautifully, I may add. And he can do that because we have freedom in this country, in our lives, in our churches, in our homes. So they were released. They got their freedom. And they went right back to work. Spent time in prayer. And again, if I were in their shoes, my prayer would be, Lord, please protect me. Protect me, protect me, protect me. Keep me safe. Keep my family safe. Keep my children safe. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that prayer, and I do pray that. And I encourage you to pray that. But if that's all we pray, shame on us. Because we can learn from the disciples there, jumping from the first verse I read down to 29. And the disciples are praying, say, and now, Lord, consider their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness. He said, God, God, you know what they threatened us with. You know what they're capable of. You know what they want to do. And that's where I would have said, and protect me from it. But these disciples said, you know what they're capable of. You know what they want to do. Now give us boldness that we can continue to speak the word of God. Now that's freedom. You know our country. The world is coming after our country. The enemy is coming after us, our lives, the lives of our children. And instead of sitting in the corner, hoping and praying, let's ask for boldness to do what we are called to do as believers, as children, as the bride of Christ. And let's preach his word. Let's live out his commandments. Let's love our neighbor as we love ourselves and love the Lord with everything in us, with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. Let's love the Lord our God with everything. And Lord, give us boldness 
may we speak your words with boldness. And continuing reading, verse 30. While you stretch out your hand for healing, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And that's where their prayer ended. But it tells us what happened there. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. We have freedom. And I praise God for it, including the freedom in our country. But when we come against the enemy, may we not run and hide and cower. May we pray for more boldness and more boldness in preaching God's word. Abundant life, that's what we are called to do. As Christians, we are called to live boldly. I don't want to arrive in heaven safely without a scratch, without a scar. I want to arrive in heaven knowing that I live dangerously for God's glory. And yes, it's easy to stand here and say that in the midst of you unbelievably kind and loving people. It's easy to stand up here and be bold. But when you and I walk out those doors, may we, may we be bold. May our lives, our very lives, preach boldness, whether we're speaking or not. May we live the life that we are called to live. And that call does not include me praying to arrive safely at the finish line. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we can be in your house. I thank you for this very, very kind, loving family of believers at Abundant Life. And I pray, Lord, I continue to pray that you will provide them with the, a pastor, the pastor that you have prepared for them. And I pray that you would fill us, each of us, just as the disciples prayed, fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we would be bold in our lives, in our words, in our deeds, for your glory, for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.